the pond's still low. I think I'm gonna feed the fish this morning. I come down to do a little work here and there around the yard and stuff. Yeah, I can't wait to get back down here and get back to work on my pond. Well, it's green bean picking time this morning. Man, I have got a lot of them. Got an ocean of them to pick. Brought my cart down on my ATV so we can load them up. And I'm planning on canning these, uh, blanching, freezing, and dehydration. And of course, I'm gonna give some away too. I don't use any herbicides or pesticides on my garden. I stay organic. I do add a little bulk fertilizer here and there just for a perk, but not much. Just a little. Got quite a yield of beans. Like I said, I could snap these off here right now. And I could eat them raw. All I gotta do is knock the dust off. And they're ready to go. Now, that's what amazes me. Like I say, I haven't used any, no pesticides at all. Not not one drop. I don't use it anyway. But no, absolutely nothing has touched my beans. Hasn't been on them anywhere. Nothing's messed with. It's amazing. Pretty good year this year. A lot put away. I'll tell you what, it's nice too to have a little equipment that makes things a lot easier. Having tractors and implements and stuff to tote things around with. There's about 10 minutes worth of green beans. A little over half a bucket, just that little section right in here. And there's still a bunch more I could have picked, but I'm gonna let them grow a little bit more. Well, I've been processing my green beans since late last night. I'm still working on it. I haven't even started picking good yet. I'm planning on canning this first batch here and seeing how that turns out. And then I'll continue from there to see what I'm going to uh, decan more. And I'm going to blanch, freeze. I'm going to dehydrate for the long run, too, on these. I've just got a lot of them, plenty to store. I've been going since early this morning. I've got everything clean for doing my canning and my green beans I picked yesterday. Beans has all been cut to one-inch pieces. Uh, they've been all rinsed well and clean. Everything's been sterilized, all the utensils, pots and pans, everything, in hot soapy water. Rinse uh, thoroughly with hot water. I got my vinegar out and ready, my little white towel for my lids when I'm ready to put the, the lids on the top of it. Got to boil, bring my green beans to a boil for, uh, let them, once they start boiling, which you're starting to do now, I got to let them go for five minutes. They'll be ready to put in the jars. I got my rings getting warm. That has to go to 180. I'm building up my jars and my water for my canner and everything to fulfill. Uh, I'm building that up to uh, 180 degrees. I am using the hot pack method for this. And when I put the jars over here and fill them, I've got to have one inch of head space on them before I put the lids on to make sure I have plenty of room for these. It does call for one inch. My green beans will be ready in a couple more minutes and then I'll turn them off. Uh, then I gotta check my lids over there, my temperature. I've slowly been bringing this up to time with this boiling, the green beans boiling. I've been bringing it up very slowly, getting up to 180 so everything will match. So these will be done about the same time the jars are ready. And then I'll maintain that 180. And I got my canner over here set up and ready to go. And one thing I do have figured out, being a lab, being a lab tech before, a certified lab tech, uh, before I retired, uh, I'm dealing with pirates here. Uh, any sudden cold and heat together will make them shatter. So that's what the temperature is all about with the 180 and keeping everything hot, pouring hot water in them and everything, whether you're doing a raw pack or a hot pack. It's all about not shattering your Pyrex. Same way with the level in the canner, two to three inches. Mine calls for, uh, my Presto calls for, uh, from three, at least three inches it says, regardless. But yeah, I'm following the instruction manual plus all my videos. I've been following my ball canning guide, putting it all together. The big stock pot that I had filled up to the top, green beans, I have a little bit left over. I had enough for about a pint jar. I didn't have none ready. So I'm just gonna go ahead and see if these will fit in a quart bag or pint bag. And I'll put them in the freezer 
and that would be my extra and I still have a lot of them yet to put away but I'm going to freeze those right now. Yeah right now I got the stove on, first time use for this canner, I'm going to bring it up to temperature and then we're going to go ahead and uh, do them for 25 minutes as it calls for. Uh, once it starts venting and everything and I get my pressure up to 11 and that vent line stays steady then I'll go ahead and pop it on there and once it stays at 11 I'll do the countdown from there. I didn't have quite a full quart enough for a jar so what I'm going to do is go ahead and fill my bag with water partially some rice the beans in the cool water like I say I already cooled them down in the strainer so I'm going to seal these up, get the air out of it, and have these water tight so they won't freeze or burn, they'll last a long time. Start working water out, of course working one handed isn't easy. This is the only bag I got, I still got a lot of these to put away. Okay, there it is. These are going in the freezer. All right, I'm letting my pressure build up. And once it gets to 11, or when it gets to nine, I'm gonna tweak it down just a hair on the heat back there. I'm gonna pop it down and try not to overpressure it. And you have to start your countdown at 11 PSI. You have to maintain that for 20 minutes, 25 minutes, I'm sorry, not bad, 25 minutes. Yeah, turn it down to two and a half. It's maintaining right at 11 pounds. Touching right in the 11 pound mark, so that's perfect. Two steps I forgot. I didn't, that should be okay though. I didn't wipe the rim with uh, vinegar and a clean paper towel. And I didn't add two tablespoons of vinegar, white vinegar, to my water in the canner. So what I'm gonna have to do is once they cool down, I'm gonna have to clean them with some uh, vinegar water so they don't discolor. I have to clean them with that, so. Hey, I did, I'm doing good so far, if this carries through. The two and a half is definitely the ticket, because it has been maintaining that 11 PSI perfect. It's doing perfect. So that's what we gotta go with. Start out at nine, bring it up to pressure to steam. Once it's steaming steady, pop it on 10 minutes, pop the cap on. That'll build up pressure. The lock will pop up. The pressure will go on up that point and then once it gets uh, to about 9 right at 9 psi go over there I have to go over there and slowly work that down in increments to 5 4 and then 3 2 and a half and then that once you hit two and a half you're good once you're at your pressure of 10 pounds of a stator there yes I just uh, blanched and bagged four more quarts stuck the leftover from the when I was canning and another quart so there's five quarts there and I've got six quarts in here cooling down. I'll take these out later. You have to let them cool down very slowly on their own. If you don't, pay a heavy price on your vacuum. And because they've got a seal when they cool down. So you've just got to let them run the time and then take them out, clean them up, and uh, label them. I'll do that here shortly. Well, it's finally cooled out enough for me to take out the quarts. You can see they're still boiling. As soon as they cool down enough, that lid's all going to pop in on them. They'll all sink in. Yep, they all come out really good. Great success. Well, I got four eggs from the chickens. I've been getting four and six. Been getting quite a few. They're uh, they're starting to produce now. It's going to start having me a few dozen eggs a day now, probably. Well, I must have about 20, 25 pounds right here just in this bag of green beans. I mean, I have got a lot of them, and I'm still about half through with the first picking, and it's time to get started on the second picking. That's just, uh, just in this batch today. My purple potatoes, it's doing real good. They are really doing good in here. I think I got my greenhouse in the perfect location. I got to get out here and finish getting everything set up. I went and got me a couple of big bags of potting soil, about 100 pounds. And 
I gotta get out here and start planting my little planters to get me some shells up and stuff. Down to a, a nursery down the road here on Spirit Lake Road, Spirit Lake Road Nursery. And got me a bunch of tomatoes. I thought I would get five quarts out, out of it, but looks like I'm only gonna get three. So I'm water bathing tomatoes now. So I've got green beans so far canned, and now I'm gonna have tomatoes. Um, yeah, I'm gonna let these run 45 minutes. It calls for 45. I'm gonna go over maybe about 15 more minutes because I wasn't pouring hot water in it and I slowly heated up the jars too, let them slowly get warm because it is Pyrex. My temperature's up a little bit less, about 145 so far. But once I get up to 180, I'm gonna maintain that for an hour at least, for about an hour. All right, we got a rolling boiling going on. I gotta set my timer for 45 minutes. Again, another round. Endless, endless, endless green beans. Endless green beans. I just picked these in a few minutes just from a little section here. Um, I've got rows and rows and rows to keep going. More than I can handle. I can't pick them fast enough. I can't put them away fast enough, which is really good. This is one of the best bean crops I've, I think I've ever had. Perfect day in Florida. It's nice this morning. It's in the 70s. It's beautiful, sunny. Nice breeze. Everything's going great. My uh, cabbage I transplanted tried to wilt on me at first. So I had to spread some out. I got them a little too thick in the row over there. But they're doing real good. They're going to make some good heads here. I need to transplant some more of them. The greenhouse is doing great. Still working on it, setting it up. But my tomatoes are doing really perfect. Um, they're really coming up nice. I'm gonna stick a basket in between them and uh, bring it up and I'll just tie them to it from the, let it be the center support and just tie them all to it like I've done before. And I'm gonna put some more wood chips in there too with my chipper shredder and kind of build all of this up I still got more to add in the back I gotta do some uh, I need to pot up some uh, uh, different veg and stuff and some of my little small pots to kind of spread them out that's coming later my blue potatoes or purple potatoes man they're just growing like crazy but like I was saying before this is just gonna be seed I want to do this to increase my yield for later just build it up but yeah I put my greenhouse in an excellent location uh, I got my temporary irrigation up for now. I'll do a better one later, but I got under the edge of these pine trees and It catches this perfect morning right on up to midday Sun and then when it really starts getting hot in Florida and uh, Super hot the shade catch it takes over after that and then the plants don't overheat and dry out and burn up But yeah, a really great day gonna get out here and uh, fire up my tiller run down these rows right here and there's another row over there i'm going to till it down level it out and get my second tractor and bring the better in and raise it up again and try to get some more crops out just trying to keep everything moving steady and just try not to overwhelm myself but i'm pretty well maintaining that right now of being overwhelmed it's already but look at here these things are so covered in beans every single plant is just covered massive scales of them just massive just unreal one of these long pillowcases and that's probably i want to say i picked about 20 25 feet out of three rows that are about 200 250 feet long so yeah i'm in a crack i guess i'm going to get hold of some of my buddies that like to put stuff away too and See if they come over and get some of these. They're just too many for me to pick here. Way too much. I've already picked probably, I bet I've done picked about 120 pounds already just in the past week, if not more. It's time for a break. I got a bucket full and I filled up another pillowcase. So, yeah, got plenty. I'm going to go take a break, come back out, and just keep picking more. Recycled around here. Nothing gets wasted. All my tips off my green beans I was processing for the dehydrator last night. Got them. I'll have more for them tomorrow. More bean picking to go. And, oh, we got a lot of eggs, man. Yep, we got a lot of eggs. I got two, 
four, six, seven eggs today. Oh yeah, plenty of eggs. Well, I'm back to picking endless beans forever. Uh, just from that stake right there, just to right here to the to the bucket, right here, I've got this many, and these has already been picked once. But here's what I got: uh, my green beans. They're uh, tender, good, and they're good enough that I don't have any pesticides. And my dogs eat them like crazy. They love them. Totally safe, right off the vine. Look at that. Diddy loves her some green beans. They, they eat them like crazy. Well, I just stopped right there. I made me a mark right there on a little steak right there. And I'll go back to picking tomorrow. I'm planning on tilling all of this in. And bringing the other tractor in and do raised bed and redo this. I have a lot of stuff I want to put in. Uh, my okra there. I need to go through that real good. Fertilize those and kind of replant on top of those. Where that little grass is like there. Try to do something with that. Got a whole lot of green beans for 24 hours. In a dehydrator. And taking them out what we're doing is we're putting them in brown bags yeah I'm going to lose half of them but they're like super dry they're almost like dried noodles yeah I'm losing a couple being one handed but yeah see how dry they are what I'm doing separating them into uh, brown paper bags and those that'll protect them from puncturing the vacuum bag and I'll seal them up and vacuum them and then I'll put a dusting bag I made up in there which are those right there dusting bags and that's silicon dioxide pure crystal let's see dry them on they're just like dried macaroni and I did a 24 I always go a 24 minimal because I needed 100% dry because I want these to last a long, long time. And you have to be careful too because just this amount right here will make a huge, massive bowl of green beans right here. So I got to separate them accordingly. Time I'm putting away the dehydrated green beans, I'm, uh, I'm going to blanch three to five minutes. I'm going to stir these green beans and I'm going to put them away whole in freezer bags in portions and put them in the freezer. Try not to depend on a freezer totally. I'm also canning and dehydrating because I want to make sure in case you ever lose power you don't lose everything. I double bag these green beans because they're sharp so I roll them separately and then one on the outside and I got my desiccant bag. My uh, silica dioxide is up underneath the fold there to protect it, that'll keep it dry and everything will be good tight package. We're going to find out. That's where you got to be careful when this stuff dries. It will puncture your bag and release your pressure and just, you just have to go back with another bag over top of it and reseal it. a lot of green beans there too. all done. Ready for long term. All I gotta do is date it, label it, ready to go. Putting away our green beans full length into the bags. And we'll just line them all up nice and order organized. And when I get through putting my portions in and fill this bag up, Fill up with water next. All right, what I did, I actually took those beans in a stock pot, stacked them in there after I trimmed each end full length, and filled it with water on the stock pot on the stove. I put it on high, 
brought them up to a boil. Let, once they reach a rolling boil, I let them boil three to five minutes for sterilization. And that makes them, uh, tenders them up just a little bit. And then uh, brought them over, put them in the strainer, run the cold water out of the sink. And then I just started separating into bags. And I'm adding water to the bags. And the reason I'm adding this water is to make sure that they don't freeze or burn and they last longer as the water, the ice in it that it forms will actually insulate them from freezer burn. I said I'm going to overfill them. And what I'll do, kind of doing one handed here, what I'm going to do is bring it across. I'm one handed here. I'm going to bring it across. I'm going to get rid of the excess water. And there we go. And that's saw uh, they'll be under the water when I freeze them. I'll make sure they're submerged, stacking, and they're good to go. And you get a long time out of them and not worry about them being burned. Well, I'm about to till up me some more roads here. Them two, I let them go. And I never did plant them. I've been so busy. So I got these two here going toward the greenhouse. And I'm going to hit the other side of those peas over there for this to try to get something in there. Don't know what I'm going to plant yet. I got a lot of stuff I can put in the ground. So I want to get on it now. Yeah, it's leveling out good. again got a whole lot of them it's kind of nice cleaned around the garden real good so I gotta you can't you can only try to manage the grass you can't, it's impossible to outrun it but that's fine I roll it back in keeps everything going in the soil but yeah what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take uh, on my very last batch of these I'm gonna leave them and I'm gonna seed them all out and use them for my heritage seeds for the next year's garden well, about 10 minutes later, my bucket's pretty well filled up. I gotta start filling up my uh, pillowcase. I only went from a little spot right here to right here. You can see how many beans I got. I'm gonna have to give these away. I've already uh, dehydrated, vacuumed, uh, desiccated, put away. I've, uh, I took and uh, blanched and froze. I cut them up one inch lengths. I did, cut the ends off, did them whole and blanched and froze those. I've canned and I've got to, I'm gonna have to give these away because I've done been, I'm pretty well about bean to death. So yeah, pretty well here on out to be given away. And then after that, it'd be safe for seed for the following year to give me some heritage seed. Well, 10 minutes later, another bucket 
and here pretty quick that bag's gonna be stuffed I don't know probably 20 25 pounds worth just right there another great sunny day in Florida perfect weather brought down my cultivator brought down my okra seed brought down my planter and I got the okra attachment on it um, yeah what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go ahead and take uh, take my rose here and I'm gonna take my garden rake and I'm gonna bring these up and level them out and adjust them up real good and I'll go in and flatten them out with the cultivator and then I'll run my cedar on top of it and see how this works I'm checking out my greenhouse while I'm down here I got blooms on my tomatoes everything's growing so fast in here it's just staggering the uh, purple potatoes it's doing really awesome that's the best I've ever seen a potato grow that I've ever grown and I got uh, another bloom on this one a few actually coming on and this is patio tomatoes they're hybrid yeah I'm gonna come in here and I got I, I uh, sprouted some uh, ginger root that I had got from the store and put in pots and I'm gonna plant them in here next in this area and I got some dill I want to put when I clean all this area out and get it adjusted in another planter um yeah the idea is I brought down my push plow what I'm gonna do I'm planning on uh, going on ahead and running it across the top I'd rake out what little grass and hopefully theoretically it'll flatten it out good and flat and get it ready for my cedar because the soil has to be nice and loose to, for the blade to cut in plant the seed and roll across it evenly so I'm going to experiment and try that I'm always experimenting trying something new where I can plant more easier and faster so I think this might work might not if not I'll just continue to use my uh, uh, garden rake and we're going to see how it goes with it but a couple days ago got out here tilled everything and brought out my raised bed attachment on the other tractor and because I actually got two tractors and makes it easier and I ran and lifted the beds up and then to where I just went the one to the right here I dressed it up flat getting it close angling and you see comparable to the one on the left how rough it is and actually the way that is right there if you want to plant potatoes and stuff like that I mean you'd be good to go you just shove the potatoes in there a little fertilizer and you just pull the dirt over it and you'd be ready but when it comes down to doing seed a little more complicated a little more work but still easier so I got some pretty long rows out here. Well, that seemed to work pretty good. One thing I learned here, if you look at these blades when you're cultivating it, when I took it across there, it would grab any other loose grass that was left in there. And what it would do, it would grab it and it'd work it toward each side. So I was grabbing it and throwing it out of the way, and then I realized it would just carry it over to each side, and I was good to go. That's all I really needed. I just didn't want it to interfere with my planter. But it did speed things up. Made things a lot faster. Run it right down here in just a minute. So now we're ready to get our cedar set up for our okra. This, the left row, I just planted summer yellow squash, the crook neck. On the right hand side here, that's all okra. So yeah, that's all done. So these rows are completed here. Uh, I still got one row over there yet to, to shape up a little bit and plant. But what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to get my uh, neighbor some fresh green beans. And I'm going to send him over a dozen fresh eggs. I think he'll like that. There it is. I picked a little bit of green beans for my neighbor. And also, I got my ginger root planted. It'll look better when I get it out here. Because the problem, I had it out there where it really wasn't getting water good enough. But it will now. So... Yeah, it'll do great. It'll pop on out there real green.